Hello everybody, this is Aaron Dominion, I'm back with the Creation Kit Scripting Series Papyrus Tutorials. I'm going into Objects, uh, the second part of the series, and we're continuing with the introduction to Object Oriented, and we're going into Inheritance in this episode. So what is Inheritance? Inheritance is the concept that ab objects have traits and derive uh, functions, variables, events from other objects. Um, you see a lot of similar objects in real life, and uh, there's other objects that do stuff similar to that, but it has some differences here and there, but you can trace it back to object. Um, vehicle is a good example of a word that we throw around, but then you have a more specific, like a car, plane, etc. Um, in the papyrus, uh, context functions and events are the main items that you will get from an object um, good example of uh, these type of things in the papyrus world object reference global variable inheriting from form another one uh, that helps highlight uh, what you can do with inheritance actor is inheriting from object reference and since we went in our previous one saying that object reference is inherited from form, you will see um, why it's important, this distinction I've highlighted here in the slide. So let's go into the real world example first so we can try to get a familiar concept of inheritance. So we have the vehicle, and then car, plane, I added train in here for just another one in a derived vehicle. So for the purposes of this uh, example, I looked at the example from the last uh, video, and we have the make, model, year, color, condition as variables, and whatever else is defined on a vehicle. Then functions, start, stop, turn, break, and then whatever else is core to a vehicle. Now, car extending vehicle. So all of the variables and functions that were part of vehicle are now on the car. And in addition to what vehicle could do, um, car has a trunk, a stereo, um, Many of the newer cars out there have some sort of onboard device or computer system behind it, like Toyota or GM, uh, whatever brand you can think of. It probably has some sort of operating system. And there's, of course, going to be other items that define a car, um, but this is just a few of the ones that I could think of. Um, functions, uh, is it in the lines? Uh, thinking of uh, some of the newer cars that can detect whether you've uh, drifted out of the lane or not. Um, parallel parking, some of the newer ones can do that now. Um, at intersection, I was just thinking uh, some of the examples of the self-driving cars out there. They have to be able to detect if they're at an intersection or not or not at the time. Um, let's move to plane. Uh, again, a plane is going to have all the variables and functions that we have from car, um, like the make model year and so on, and then the start stop turn. Um, the variables that are added in addition to what vehicle has uh, compartments for like storage or different sections of the, sh of the plane, so on. Um, optimal elevation, I'm not sure if that's an actual variable. Some systems might see that as uh, the optimal spot for the plane to be in the sky. I don't know. Um, wingspan, uh, just to define how far the wings go from one end to the other. And then whatever else that are specific to a plane. Uh, functions, ascend, descend, retract landing gears, and then anything else, uh, rudder, and such. So, going to a train, again, 
all the things that are from vehicle will be a part of train, the variables and functions. Um, in addition to those, uh, you have track type, um, whether it's electric rail, steel rail, so on and so forth. Um, attached cars um, is the pa number of passenger cars, number of cargo cars, uh, is there a caboose in the mix, so on and so forth. And then any other train specific variables. A um, few functions I could think of offhand, um, since emergency brake on a train also extends to all the cars behind it. Whenever somebody pulls it, um, it has to stop uh, all the cars in the back. Um, and then you have lights and such in each of the cars. Power has to run there somewhere from the engine itself. And then, I'm sure there's other functions that could be defined for a train, but this is all I could come up with uh, from the top of my head as potential items that could define a train. And uh, before I move on to the scripting side, uh, these are just what I came up with to help uh, conceptualize uh, vehicles like the abstract, and then car is a more defined type of vehicle, a plane is more defined type of vehicle and the train is more defined type of vehicle. So let's look at scripting now. Um, I only used two objects that are extended objects from one of the core object types um, just so it was easy to look at. Um, form has so many different objects that's extending it. That's why I've uh, annotated it with the dot 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 there. So form, we all know from our scripts that there's properties or variables that we use whenever we're doing the scripts. So it is reasonable to assume that form has some sort of properties that are in there, but we don't know the guts of it. So I can't comment. And what's there or not. Um, member functions, uh, going off the wiki, we have get form ID, get gold value, player knows. Um, there's a few other ones in there, but I only listed a few of those functions just for the purposes of this video. Um, and then member events, on animation event, on sleep start, on update, and then there's like an update game time and more in the events. Uh, but these, this is good to start with for form. Now let's go to object reference. It extends form. Notice, unlike in the real world example, uh, the scripting, it can only uh, retain the member functions and member events from whatever it's extending. So in the case of object reference, it only has access to functions like get form ID, get gold value, player knows, or events like on animation event, on sleep start, on update. And in addition to what it takes from form, it's going to define its own internal properties that help define it internally. Again, I can't comment on that because I don't know what Bethesda put in there. Um, member functions, uh, going off the wiki again, uh, add item, activate, get world space, enable, disable, and there's more that you could go into for that, but these are good for the purposes of this. Um, member events, uh, you have on activate, on container changed, on read, um, and then anything else that's uh, defined in object reference. And note, you can use get form ID, get gold value, player knows, or on animation event, on sleep start, or on update whenever you're working with an object reference. And that's important in your various scripts uh, to know that you can get to those items. Um, one caveat for some of these, like on read, that's only specific to books. They have a few of these in weird places, 
and the script objects are only applicable to certain items, but for the most part, um, probably 90% or more are going to be, if it's on form and you have something extending form directly, it's going to be able to access form, such as object reference being able to access all of these items. Okay, so I wanted to go into a more nested example because the base script objects have... Um, so, we have form, object reference, actor, uh, notice that's nested, and uh, I annotated the dot 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 there just to inform you that form has more objects that's extending form. So, like we were talking about a moment ago, you have to get form ID, get gold value and such as functions on animation event, sleep start, update as member events. Now we look at object reference. Again, you have all the f items from form, you have all the member functions, add item, activate, get world space, member events on activate, on container changed, on read. And now we get into actor. Actor extends object reference. And since we've covered object reference already, object reference extends form. So what this means, actor has access to all the member functions and member events from form. That's important to know because you can do your get gold value and get form ID and all those calls on an actor object or on update or on update game time. Now let's move to the object reference. So now you can do the on activate on uh, container changed um, when you're thinking about items being added or removed so on and so forth. Um, and now for actor specific functions you have add perk add spell, get level, on death, on package change, on combat state changed. Now that we've looked at this example, so object reference can use anything from form but not anything from actor. Actor can use stuff from both object reference and form because object reference has a link to form. Um, there are some exceptions to the rule of object reference not being able to use actor and that is if you know that the script you are placing uh, whatever script you're creating that's extending object reference is being added to an actor but as, as I've stated in other videos um, it's not a good practice to go on this assumption when working with these scripts uh, so the importance of inheritance um, it's a core concept of uh, both object oriented uh, scripting, programming, or papyrus scripting in particular. Um, so it helps share events and functions across multiple types of Skyrim objects, um, quests, since you have quest scripts out there, and then any other type of scripts. Um, and this is because it helps reduce duplicate functions and events. It gives you a sort of a hierarchy of, okay, so forms at the top, active magic effect is at the top what else is at the top okay what's next under form or the other hierarchy okay uh, in the case of object reference okay what's underneath that um, so this allows for new scripts to inherit from uh, the game script objects um, so anytime you make a new script you are using inheritance whenever you're getting <coughs> sorry getting uh, 
the get gold or whatever on update, on death, and so on. And then scripts can also inherit from other scripts, um, but I intend to go into that into a different video in more detail. Um, so why is inheritance important? Well, it will help you know, okay, I'm limited to this type of functionality when I'm trying to work with these characters, or I'm limited to this when I'm working with the quest, so on and so forth. Um, it also helps understand, okay, I'm in my game, I see a chest, I see a sword, I see the player, I see an Argonian. They don't all seem similar, but there's parts of each of those that are shared, um, like on, on update is available to each of those, um, on activate is uh, available to each, so on and so forth. Um, also helps knowing, uh, in this particular example I put down here, that active magic effect can't use um, like on update or other events directly. Which, um, you won't, it's important to understand that because you can't look at, um, one of these, oh, this is what this person's doing for this, so it's got to work across the board. There's rules in place for what functions, what events can be called from different scripting objects. Um, so this goes into my next point. Um, if you're looking in the script object section of the creation kit wiki, which I'm going to have attached in the description of this video as a reference, um, if you're working with that wiki, you will know, okay, it will list what it extends, and you can keep going up that tree until you hit the highest point. And, like, active magic effect, it does not extend form, so it's something you don't want to look at form while you're trying to add an event to active magic effect, and so on and so forth. <laughs> I know that's a lot to take in, and there's a whole lot there at once. I encourage people, because this is one of the harder concepts in the scripting uh, language, to revisit this video. Just if you have uh, questions on, well, what is inheritance, or how do these objects relate to each other, um, because I went with examples that are pretty common, and it's something that helps you get into the core mindset when you're going to design your uh, scripting system, uh, your scripts or scripting systems. Uh, so contact information, Skyrim Modder, um, past videos I've listed my Nexus profile primarily, but I've since expanded out. Um, I've listed my Nexus Mods profile on here, Gamefront profile, ModDB, and if you see me on any other message boards like Bethesda.net or in whatever platform this video is on, feel free to go to the comments section uh, with questions or comments on it. Um, and I will see everybody in the next video.